what I'm going to do is ask you to divide up the arrays that you can see in a very particular way. Um, can I ask you to write for me on the top of the page this word? Can you write that for me? It's a bit of a mouthful. The way you would pronounce it is polyominoes. That's what we're going to be drawing in a second. Um, a polyomino is a particular kind of shape. Um, it's constructed from and built from squares, which is why you've got those grids there. Okay? Now, let me give you an example of how you could take those grids that you've got there and divide it up into these kinds of shapes. This is the same kind of rectangular array that you have in front of you, right? And you can see each of the shapes here that I've got is broken up into um, squares, and that's what makes it a polyomino. You guys are actually familiar with the most famous kind of polyomino, which is when you've got two squares in a polyomino, two squares joined together. Does anyone know what that's called? It's not called a polyomino, it's called a, a domino, right, thank you. Do like duo, which means two, right? So you guys are familiar with um, dominoes, you can, you can have like triminoes? Pentominoes are four, pentominoes are five, and it just goes on and on and on. So you can see I have a variety of pentominoes, uh, sorry, polyominoes here. I want you to help me work out, we can do this right now in front of us, what would be the mean of the area of each of these polyominoes? Have a think about it. There's a hard way to go about this, and there's an easy way to go about it. Can you remind me again when I gave you those numbers, right? How did you calculate the mean? What were the two things that you did? Do you number one? We can, all, you can all tell me. We added it all together. We added every number, right? And then we got a total. Then what was the second thing you did? Divide. Divide. By how many numbers you got. Okay. Now, hopefully, if you have a look at this, um, because it's a rectangular array, without counting every single square, you can fairly quickly work out what the total is, right? That was the first step. What's the total number of squares here? 60. 60, yeah? Do you agree? 6 by 10, at least if I'm counting, okay? So there are 60 squares. How many different colored shapes, different polyominoes, have I divided this particular shape? Six. I've got 6, right? So therefore, you already know what the total is, it's 60. And then you're going to divide by 6, which gives you a mean of 10, as you can see. Um, I really like the number 10. Okay, so you get the idea, right? Now this is just a, an example, um, but in particular I want you to notice out, notice here for me. Um, every single polyomino that you can see on the screen, they're all different, do you notice that? I haven't repeated any shape, like see this guy over here, it's 3 by 2. I don't have another polyomino like that anywhere else in the diagram, does that make sense? Alright, here's the challenge. Uh, I think I have it written upon this, like, I don't want to spoil by showing you the answer, so I'm going to turn this up for a second. Um, I have here, yeah, I was about to show you the question. Where is it? Here is the real challenge that I'm going to give you. Let me zoom in a little bit. There we go. So, just like you saw before, right? Um, like I did in example, right? I'd like you to take these rectangular arrays and I want you to divide up these arrays, these rectangles, into um, a whole bunch of polyominoes, just like you saw what I did, such that. No two polyominoes are alike, that's what I mentioned before, they're all unique and they never repeat a shape. Um, and in particular, this is where we think that would mean, right? I'd love you to divide them up into such a way, definitely use a pencil to start with because it's not easy, such that the mean area of your polyominoes is, okay, here you go, right? So I've got five particular ways I want you to divide this up into. I have given you um, eight canvases to use just in case something goes horribly wrong. Uh, where you look over your friends work, you're like, no, no, that's not right, you're doing calculation incorrectly. Um, but I advise you to do this in pencil to start with so you can think through if you make mistakes. It's a big deal. Here's the challenge, okay? Um, I think, at least according to my brain, I have listed these in increasing order of difficulty, uh, at least that's how I found them. But you're welcome to start on any of these, A, B, C, D, or E. There's not really an order to them in terms of how you want to do it, okay? So good luck. I will leave this up here so that the steps are clear. Does anyone have any questions? Krishan? Um, the shape. So let me go back. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Okay, that's how it goes. So, uh, we'll just pick up. There we go. Have a look closely. 
Um, Krishan asked a really good question, which was, when I said a like, what do I mean? Uh, I mean in terms of the configuration of the shape, as opposed to, have a look at this pink shape over here, and the blue one in the bottom right corner. Do you see that? Do you see, how many squares do you see? The pink one and the blue one? Seven. I count seven, right? So you would call these heptominoes, because that's the seven, like a heptagon. So they're, they're both allowed to have the same area. In fact, the final two questions, I specifically want them to have the same area, so that's part of the challenge. Okay, does that make sense? So, this is an example, but it's not one of the questions you have because uh, I'm, I'm gracious and merciful, but not that gracious and merciful. So, let me come back to the questions for you. Uh, the challenges are 6 units squared as a mean, 5 units squared as a mean, 4 units squared as a mean, and then I'll let you come to these in due time. Hopefully, the wording is clear enough. Okay?